Hi, this is Michael Fisher and I want to speak briefly about uh, some of the terminology that's used in reference to stocks and uh, public equities. And we've talked a lot about what stocks are, i.e. the slices of equity of companies. And we've talked quite a bit about um, also about market efficiency and mutual funds and index funds and so forth. And in this video I'd like to just go through some of the terms that are used in reference to stocks um, very frequently. First of all, uh, a stock, when it's referred to as a stock, is a common stock. And that's a, a common stock is another way of referring to a stock. When the term stock is just used, um, it's meant to refer to a, a, a common stock, which is a slice of the equity of a company um, or a unit of ownership in a company. What are the earnings of a, of a, of per, of a stock or the earnings per share? The earnings per share are the earnings of the company divided by the number of shares, i.e. the earnings or the net profit or the net income of the co overall company, which is the last line of the income statement typically, divided by the number of shares, i.e. the net profit that can be attributed to each share um, of the company. And what we can do with that is we can say, we can calculate things like a P.E. ratio, where we take the price of the stock and divide it by the earnings per share, and we can figure out what a dollar of earnings or a dollar or a pound of earnings or a euro of earnings effectively cost to purchase via the stock and it gives some indication of what the valuation of the stock is on that metric. Now we looked at this ratio in another video but it, it obviously has a lot of limitations. It looks at one year. Earnings can be uh, affected by one-off items, depreciation and so forth but that is what, it, what the P-E ratio is and that's what the earnings per share are. The dividend um, is a payment that a company can make to its shareholders out of its earnings. Um, it's a way for the company to provide a return to shareholders while they hold the shares. So in a given year, if the company makes uh, a certain amount of earnings, it can do two things with these earnings. One is to retain them, in which case they end up on the balance sheet as a part of shareholders' equity on the right side of the balance sheet. Um, and, and, and corresponding there would be cash potentially on the left side to keep the balance sheet in balance. And that's if it retained the earnings and the balance sheet would grow by these retained earnings on both sides. Or the company can pay these earnings out as a dividend, in which case shareholders receive a cash payment frequently, or it can be in shares, but typically a cash payment um, for each, a certain cash payment for each share that they hold. Uh, and that is the dividend. The dividend yield is the dividend divided by the share price. It gives a percentage return for uh, shareholders based on the current share price and uh, for the shares that they're holding. So for example, a company that pays a dividend of $2 per share and the share price is $100 has paid, uh, provides a dividend yield of 2%. So this is a, a percentage yield measure of the return that we receive, that the shareholders would receive via the dividend. And as a shareholder, over the course of our investment, we would expect to receive, if the company pays a dividend, the dividend and the dividend yield would form part of the return, as well as any capital appreciation that we would enjoy based on uh, the company's share price going up. And of course, this company's share price can also go down. The uh, last thing I just wanted to mention very quickly in the context of terms that relate to stocks is that in some cases companies might also have different classes of stocks um, and and the other one that's most often referred to is a preferred stock now when someone says that the stock of a company they're referring to the common stock the common stock which provides a slice of equity which provides certain rights like a vote on major events that affect the company or in a vote at the annual general meeting for the directors of the company um, who ultimately choose the CEO and, and are very much involved in compensation and uh, uh, retention issues of staff. Um, so that com uh, the common a shareholder is, is, or an owner of a stock is the owner of a common stock and it comes with, it's a slice of the equity of a company as we've spoken about and it comes with certain privileges and rights like this vote, like potentially the right to a dividend um, a right to the assets after the debts have been paid off as the debt holders are more senior in the capital structure. 
But just very briefly, sometimes a company might also have another class of shares known as preferred shares or preferred stock, and it would be specifically referred to as such. It differs from common stock that it usually doesn't carry voting rights and often has preferential treatment in terms of dividends, i.e. the common stockholders don't receive a dividend until preferred shareholders are received a dividend. It's much more rare and spoken about less frequently. However, um, they do exist and, and preferred shares are on the balance sheet, another form of financing sitting between the debt, which is the most senior uh, of the more senior of the two, uh, between debt and equity, it sits sort of in the middle with no voting rights but a preferred right to a dividend and, uh, and seniority in the case of liquidation over the common stock. So that, was, that is what a preferred share is. And those are some of the terms that are, that are often referred to when it comes to stocks um, and when stock markets are spoken about.